At this time, we ask that you bring your attention to the course. At this time, we would like to arm the 2014 1A Sectional Championship Team. The 2014 Culver basketball team beat Lacrosse 64-31 in round one of the sectionals, beat Triton 61-51 in the sectional semifinal, and they went on to beat Argus 56-49 for the sectional championship. The team finished 16 and 8, led by head coach Kyle Elliott and assistants Brett Barrett and Tom Kruger. Let's meet our 2014 sectional championship managers, players, and coaches. First of the managers, not able to be in attendance tonight, Megan Thompson Bailey, and Bailey Piernow and Mark May uh, Mayer. Well, first manager, Dudley Troy. Coach by Brett Barrett 
and Coach Kruger when something that I called didn't quite work out the way I anticipated. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give one more round of applause for our 2014 Class 1A Sectional Champion. Under the direction of Jason Crittenden. Once again, welcome to tonight's matchup between the Pioneer Panthers and your Clover And starting lineups tonight. First for the visiting Pioneer Panthers, a sophomore at guard, number five, Micah Rands, a 6'2 senior at guard, number 10, Drew McCaig, a 5'6 senior at guard, number 11, Rylan Toloza, a six foot junior at forward, Lucas Perry, number 23, and uh, at guard, a 5'11 senior, number 24, Braden Erickson. Once again, the head coach of the Panthers is Darren McCaig. He's 29 and 58 in his fourth year at Pioneer. Come, in, come into tonight's game uh, uh, averaging 44.1 points a game. And now the starting lineup for the Cavaliers. The 5'10 junior at guard number three, David Height. The other guard, a 5'10 sophomore, number 20, Jonas McEwen. Forward number 15, a 6'1 junior, Logan Claudel. At small forward, a 6'2 senior, number 23, Audrea Guasp. And at guard, a six-foot senior, number 12, Jack Rogers. Cavaliers under the direction of um, Kyle Evans. Kyle is 32 and 52 in his fourth year here at Culver Community. Tenth year coaching overall. So it will be an interesting, uh, interesting matchup here. Two coaches have been at the schools for four years, and we're, uh, I'm excited for this one. I think it'll be a good game. Yeah, I think it'll be similar styles as well. I think Pioneer plays a 2-3 zone that kind of traps a little bit and gets after it, and obviously we're going to be doing the same. So it'll be who can break the zone tonight and get maybe some paint touches and see how it goes. Yeah, Steve just handed me a note here. Uh, number five, Micah Rands. He was the, he's the great nephew of uh, Larry Rands, former Culver Community head basketball nice. coach. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure he's a really good football player too, right? Is he the quarterback? Yeah, so I thought he was a quarterback for the team, so very athletic. You know, probably just like Larry, right? All right. <laughs> so the uh, Panthers win the tip. They get it inside, drive at the baseline, kicks it back out. Yeah, that is Erickson. Toloza now inside to McCaig. Picks it up. Goes to Perry. Back down inside. Perry with it. Looks to do something. Almost loses control of it. Tries to find a teammate. Looking. Kicks it back out. That's going to be Erickson again. They go back to McCaig. Down inside to Perry. Perry gets it to the baseline to Rands. Rands around the horn, and that shot's going to be taken by Erickson, and it's going to be good. So, Braden Erickson draws first blood for the Panthers. 45-second possession there. Nice patience by Pioneer working the basketball. High post, low post, good kick out for an open three. 
It did take. A, it felt like it took a long time. So Cavaliers bring it back down the court. Rodgers with the ball. One dribble out to McEwen. McEwen looks for Guasp. Finds him. Back to Rodgers. Rodgers with the ball. Looks to attack. Is going to pass it off to Jonas McEwen. Cavaliers also taking their time. Height with the ball in the corner to Guasp. Guasp with an open three. Takes it. No good. It's going to be rebounded by Rands. He's going to dribble through with it. Kick it to Erickson. Back to Perry. Now in the corner to Rands. Skipped all the way over across to McCaig. Rands with an open three. Finds it no good, but it's going to be an offensive rebound by Drew McCaig. He'll put it back. Nice job crashing the boards by McCaig there. So the Panthers with a five-point lead here. 6.05 left to play in the first. McEwen with the ball. Gets it to Guasp. Cavaliers looking to go back and forth with it as Guasp tries to attack. Looking for... I think they were looking for Jack Rogers, but they'll get a travel. Yep, good call by the official there. Again, last night, you know, we, we struggled to get the ball in the paint against Argus' zone in the second, third, and fourth quarter. We'll see how we adjust tonight to see if we get touches. Not saying you have to shoot the ball, but you got to get paint touches to collapse the zone to kick, for kickouts. Rands with the ball, brings it across the timeline. Gets it to, to Loza. Loza over to Erickson. And he'll throw that to the second row of the bleachers. That'll be Cavalier ball. I think that guy was going to grab it. and uh, He was open. He was open. <laughs> little adjustment here. You see Jack now at the high post. So McEwen, Guas, Rogers. Looks to kick it to the corner. Height dives, gets in the paint, tosses up a floater. No good. It's going to be rebounded by Toloza. Rands with it. Drives the paint, kicks out to Toloza. Erickson, Rands, McCaig for three. No good. It's going to be rebounded by Jack Rogers. Good ball movement there by Pioneer. What's the, uh, the conditioning situation as Jonas McEwen takes a jumper? It's rebounded by McCaig and gets it to Rands. With playing back-to-back -back games. Two nights in a row as we see a foul there by, uh, by Rogers. How, how did you always handle that? With that that's tough. Anytime you have a rival game one and, and trying to bounce back the next night, your legs are gone. So uh, that's tough for motivation to get yourself up and then even have the, the fatigue that you get from the night before. It's hard to you know, overcome. So you know, that's what I talked about Coach Evans a little bit is see how we react to that. Um, last year I thought we did a great job. We went to Pioneer and beat them at their place and, you know, had some decent energy. So hopefully, you know, the substitution change here, it seems like we got a dead dead team right now, a dead gym a little bit. Yeah. Hopefully we can pick up the tempo and get something started. But, yeah, that, that's difficult when you go from the Argus Bell game next night here. That, that's a tough situation. And Rand misses his first one for two, misses that one as well, rebounded by Caleb McHugh. And that's actually why I asked. It seemed like it was taking longer to push the ball up the court. It, it, like guys weren't, uh, I, I guess, just running as fast. We're going to get a foul there. I think it's going to be on McCaig, if, if I can read Jimmy's mind. And then that's a hard thing, too. You know, when you're playing zone versus zone, you know, you're going to take your time a little more. You're going to work the ball a little bit. And it's going to take longer, and it's hard to get that tempo. So hopefully we get some things in transition to, to pick up our tempo. Correction, that foul's on Toloza. Going to be a kick there. It's going to be Noah Miller in the game for the Panthers. Wasps threes, no good. Oh, loose ball here. It's going to be picked up down to Toloza. Toloza will miss it off the glass, but that's an offensive rebound by Shiloh Rhine. You know, we hear little moans there like somebody went over the back, but when you don't put a box out into yeah, it, it's a, it's, it's a free ball. This is a good crew, too. So yeah, very good. I don't expect uh, for it to be much... Uh, leeway officiating if it's going to be what it is. So that foul on Ethan Binion. 
Look at that camera angle there by Dominic Lefebvre working the floor camera. Tyler Sadal under the Cavalier basket. R.J. Woods up top for the Cavaliers tonight. I like it. Three-man crew. I like it. Five of us total. Our biggest crew ever. If you build it, they will come. <laughs> Loose ball finally picked up by, uh, that is going to be Miller. And Rands will control it at the serve line. Two, four, five. Oh, yeah, it was six of us. Hey, Browder math, right? Browder math, you know, Mr. John Browder, we are sorry Justin did that. My joke there is usually sorry public school. But <laughs> I made that joke at a benefit auction one time, and the lady didn't like it. Yeah, she probably put I, her money back in her pocket and said, I'm not giving it. I had to explain to her, I was like, I'm a public school teacher, man. It's, it's, it's kind of ironic. It's supposed to be funny. Speaking of Larry Rands, is he here tonight? I didn't see. I haven't seen him. I haven't seen Larry in a long time. Usually, always riding his bike out in town. Yeah. Did you get any of those special K's Patty made? You know, I told her I, I got one, and I said, it's all I need. Then I saw our bowl over here by our chairs, and I might have grabbed two, three, and four. So, <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> Those guys were all grabbing it. Everybody was just taking two, and she goes, right. take them. I, and I'm, <laughs> I'm going, they're bigger than they've ever been, Patty. They're, you used to make them really tiny, and they were easy to uh, eat. Best bus rides ever oh, when you got special so Ks good. after a win. <laughs> three by Rogers, no good, but it's going to be bounced out to Guasp. He's going to get it back to Rodgers. Cavaliers look to reset. Set. Cavaliers scoreless here with 2.42 left to go in the first quarter. As Height will take a three there. No good. It's going to eventually roll into Guasp's hands thanks to Binion. Rodgers is going to drive and get a little bit of a body. I think it's going to be a body foul there. Jimmy declined that call and gave it to John. I think they both had the same call. I think so, too. Yeah. It just happened so quick. He's explaining it to him. Or he's, he's chewing on him a little bit. You know, <laughs> he, I, th I told Jimmy I'd give him $20 if he didn't make a call tonight. So maybe that's why he went to John and said, no, you got the call. Oh. He wants that extra money. <laughs> These, uh, this crew of officials, Jimmy specifically, has a way of creating a rapport with players and coaches that take the the difficulty of, of being an official out of the game. Right? No, that job of having to make a call against one team or the other, when Jimmy makes the call, it, it's, well, I trust you because I have a rapport with you. Yeah, absolutely. When I first boys coach here, he was obviously officiating my games, and I learned so much just from talking to him. You just realize how you treat officials, and <laughs> simple as that. I don't know if I've ever, ever actually seen him tee anybody up or get mad at a like. I think he's been mad at players more than he has coaches. Most coaches just know. I took a fan out in Rochester a couple weeks ago. First time in 35 years. Oh, wow. I believe it because he, he's so, it's such a class act. He doesn't want to do those things. Yeah. He wants to keep people here and have them engaged. But if they obviously don't do what they're supposed to, he knows the line. So every now and then we, we get a call or something that's weird. Like one time we had a shot at the buzzer and it was a jump ball that lodged. Like, what's the, what's the actual call there? So I'll send the clip to Jimmy. We're friends on social media, so he'll send me back an explanation and give me, give me some information. And that, that particular call, he actually had to go ask some friends because he <laughs> wasn't 100% sure, which just made me feel, yeah, that's what I thought too. Steve looked at me like, Jimmy didn't know? <laughs> it made me feel better. Like, okay, this is... Yeah, exactly, because Jimmy always knows. Right. <laughs> so, at, yeah, at the line is going to be... Um, Luke Perry shooting three. Foul there on Caleb McEwen. We'll put that one in. Panthers lead by 10 here. Wasp, Rogers drives baseline. Looks for somebody not there. Comes up and under. Bounced around. Rebounded by Shiloh Ryan. Ryan with it. McCaig for three again. He was hot from that spot earlier. He's still there. Got a nice high release on his shot. Now 
And, and obviously the difference offensively, I was getting ready to say that. Nice job by Jonas there, getting the ball into the paint. Pioneers find a way to get the ball in the paint, and we're struggling. That's a weird, weird but situation. I think it was that a was a light whistle. Yeah, <laughs> Kim light whistle. got a light whistle on that one. <laughs> Might have just went with it. Oh, I blew it. Sorry. Yep. I think it was one of those, like, uh, I better call it now. <laughs> I imagine Jimmy's going to give him a smile here soon. Yep. <laughs> I love as this crew always give each other a hard time just as well. They're always razzing each other about certain calls. So great relationship between these three officials. And I know Jimmy's multi-time state championship official. I don't know. Is Kim? I, he Kim's has. got to be. Yep, he has. And then John's done girls before, I believe. So Has Jimmy done boys and girls? Yes. I tell you, he is just relentless on the glass right now, McCabe. If you don't put a butt into him, he's going to get that rebound and a putback. McCaig, a 6'2 senior, comes into tonight's game averaging 16 and a half points a game and may have close to 10 already, if not, if not more nice than that. Nice pass. Good job getting the ball to the paint. So that foul is going to be on Erickson. I took Tyler in to meet with the officials before the game and said that, uh, hey, if you need to move these guys, you know, if you, if you guys need to <laughs> tell Tyler or Don to get out of the way, feel free. You know, this is the first time I've seen our stats all year long. We have almost, you know, three players that average double figures. That's, that's a good sign. I would have never guessed that going into tonight's game. This was uh, the points I know are correct. The rest, some of it because I didn't, coach didn't in, uh, input all the stats from gotcha. last night. Okay. Thanks to Val and Steve who sent me their stats from last night so I could redo the math. Add into them. As long as Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Carr's calculator is right in her room, we're, <laughs> we're good. So McKay, that's going to be Erickson. Shaver in the game now for the Panthers. Height both McEwens, Rogers, Claudell in the game for Culver. Blackman also in the game for Pioneer. I missed him coming yeah. in. Yeah. Good steal by David Height. May have got away with a little push off. Pig loses control of it, but gains it back, pushes it up the court. Oh. Surprised they didn't call that one, but they'll get it inside of Noah Miller. That nice bounce pass there. I say I think they might. Coach McKay might be okay with that if it results in that type of play. So, well, at the end of one, your score is 18-3. We're going to take a break, and we will be right back. You're watching Culver TV and RTC TV Four. Welcome back here, John Arnelson Gymnasium. Justin Croy, Brett Barrett, with you here, as we're set to begin the second quarter. Pioneer. Had a great first quarter, 18 to three is your score. Cavaliers struggled to, well, one, get shots, and two, uh, two when they did get shots, struggled to put them in a little bit. So I know that Coach uh, Evans challenged them there at uh, quarter break, so see how they respond to it here. Inside to Claudel, back to McEwen, height, Caleb McEwen. That'll be a foul on Erickson. Correction, that'll be Lucas Perry. Might be his second, it is. See if we can flip the switch here. Obviously we had a fantastic first quarter against Argus last night and kind of went to a lull. See if we could flip it. Maybe have a bad first quarter and let's play the next three. I think it's going to start with somebody making it. Maybe this will be the one. Looks off is get offensive rebound by McEwen. See if he'll call it on the floor. Yep, I think it should have been. Yep. I was hope, kind of hoping he'd say, well, he's making a basket. Well, good news, and maybe get some foul calls, get to the free throw line just well. That always usually helps when it comes to scoring. Yeah, Cavaliers come into tonight's game um, from the free throw line 51%, so only 47% for the Panthers. McEwen with a nice rebound there, puts it back up, can't quite finish. McKig rips it away. Oh, let's say May got away with one there. Oh, 
Foul number 20. Another uh, Cavalier known as McEwen. That's his first foul. So that'll be on McEwen's, on Caleb, or excuse me, Jonas McEwen, his first. Toloza with the ball. In the corner to Miller. He thinks about it. Hands it off to McCaig. Erickson on the cut, misses it. Finally picked up by Height. Height will push the ball up the court. But quickly is Toloza there. Three ball, little contact. Finally bounces off the rim, picked up by Jack Rogers. Rogers will go up with it, makes a basketball move, but it's going to be rebounded by Erickson. I think there's a lid. I think yeah. there's a lid on that bucket right now. That's what it felt like last night at Argus. I don't know how many threes we had go in and curl out. Yeah. All right, transition. Let's there go. by the free safety. That's tough there. Even that looked hard. You know what I mean? It's one of those where we just cannot seem to finish right now. Say they're calling this one after the shot. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it was on. Which is a good call. Continuation. I think he was on the ground when he got pummeled, so. Hewen to height. Thanks about it. That's an open look there. He throws up a floater and in. That's the first basket of the night, I believe, for the Cavaliers. The other points came on free throws, if I'm not mistaken, right? I believe so. All right, here we go. Get that. Okay. Right off the camera, see if it survived. Well, we told Dom, we said, if there's a ball coming at you, turn the camera to the side. <laughs> Don't let it hit the lens. He tried. See if he get himself readjusted. <laughs> Shout out to Steve for bringing us all his equipment as Kayla McEwen takes a three that doesn't quite make it. In between the nice legs, job, pass Logan there Bonnell. to David Height. That might be assist of the year. Yeah, right through his legs. McCaig with it, dribbles through. Obviously, this is not our normal lineup. Let's see how this crew uh, of five Cavaliers do. Pioneer will take a timeout here, their first of the evening. So, your score is 18 to 7, 531 left to go here in the second quarter. We're going to take a quick timeout, and we'll be right back. You're watching Culver TV. Welcome back here. Justin Croy, Brett Barrett with you. It'll be Pioneer Ball, 7 18 is your score. Cavaliers holding the Panther, Panther scoreless here so far in the second half. 4 0 run. Nice little start to the second quarter. Pull within nine. Toloza with the ball. Rands, McCaig. Don't come up with that one. Back to Perry. Yep. Nice job, claps in there on the high post in the red zone and coming up with the steal. So we got to get somebody in the high post yeah. action. I was going to say, we're getting a lot of, looks like it's open, nobody flashing to it. I think we called this weave, right? Well, it's a little bit in a way. Not the mo not the offense, just the yeah, back and the forth action. Yep. Yeah. Good hustle. Yeah, Caleb McEwen with the steal after giving it up, and that'll turn into a foul for the Cavaliers. I love that sign, Culver vs. Everybody. That's my, probably my favorite. I know there's T-shirts, too. That Yeah. That was from uh, last night's Bell game, and they have some leftovers. Yeah, I think they got one tonight that just says weight room. Yep. It's been kind of fun to see the they, – they did a great job last night, I yeah, thought. Yeah, last night our student section, section was, was fantastic. Love the amount of kids that were there, and they were having fun and cheering, so always a great atmosphere. Pretty sure there were some kids who now go to other schools that – used to go here that yep. came back to be Absolutely. at our cheer block. So. Absolutely. That's always that bell game tradition. Brings out the best. Nice pass. To Loza to Rands. And that's going to be, I think, at Shiloh Ryan. It is. Shiloh Ryan. Second turnover in a row right up top. Rands obviously just being an athlete and getting it. 
So we did a great job of getting back into the game a little bit, 4-0 run, and then right. turnovers up top are just wide open. Is yeah, this Bardell at the in the corner. Oh, Wasp. Yeah, no, that's not Wasp. I'm sorry. That is Kayla McEwen. This could be a potential, obviously, lineup for next year. Take out Wasp and Jack. Third layup in a row from Rands. <laughs> He's got that look on his face like, I can't buy a call. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you see that. He's like, I just want an official to give me a call. Is that four straight turnovers up that top? That is. Four straight runouts. See if, I, don't, I don't know... If it's good or if it's bad that Coach Evans hasn't called the timeout or that he's just sitting down, well, period. He's going to be letting him play through it now. Can I think you grab one those, of those headphones for me? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome into our broadcast the uh, 2014 sectional champion head coach Kyle Elliott who's going to be joining us here coach Elliott here? good how are you no, not bad good to be uh, back in the gym here so obviously before the game they talked about some of our uh, favorite memories and things and it was it was difficult to hear and everybody was you know cheering and, and guys were talking to each other so what uh, can you share with us again what your favorite what your favorite memory was of of that season or of that game well, I, I just think a lot of it, Justin, was uh, how the team uh, developed their chemistry as the year progressed. We had some young kids uh, stepping in, uh, you know, as the year progressed, getting their uh, confidence built up. And so we headed in into uh, tournament play. We had a, a group that was uh, unselfish, understood their roles uh, on the team, and uh, was able to uh, play pretty solid at both ends of the floor. Well, I know from there's there was uh, a million quotes said and I think almost all of them had to do with something that you said either in practice or in the locker room which we won't say on here because it's a family show but right. the uh, I know for me some of those memories stand out um, what was your what was your approach to going into that particular sectional because obviously I think we'd given up uh, we'd been beat by Triton earlier in the season then we lost the, to Argus and then coming back to beat both those teams, what what was the approach going in different than earlier in the year? Well, I, a lot of it heading into the tournament. I thought our attention to detail as the year progressed uh, just got better and better. Uh, kids understanding uh, scouting uh, reports and things. Coach Barron always had a solid uh, scouting report put together for each of our opponents and especially heading into the tournament. Certain things we had to do against a particular team or whatever. And we asked kids uh, like a Preston Hansel or somebody hey you know you're going to sacrifice some scoring but we definitely need you to step up at the defensive end and um, uh, he did that type of thing and, and also rebounded and, and got us some offensive putbacks and different things in that uh, tournament game against um, Argus and uh, Triton and you know and I can go right on down the list Everett Kruger played phenomenally in the uh, Argus uh, first half there kept us uh, going got that momentum going our way and um, it's just a bunch of good role players uh, and everybody accepting their roles. So obviously it makes it special with Trent, with Trent being on the team, being your son. Obviously you coached him from, you know, those fifth grade teams up, and I think I think Mike took over right in seventh eighth grade yeah. year, and but you you were already the head coach by then though, so that uh, that had to make the the night more special for you and and obviously your family and the doing the video, putting some of the video stuff together. Your dad obviously was in those videos and, and miss him because he was always the one, you know, say hi to me no matter what. And it didn't matter if you were carrying water bottles or hitting, you know, averaging 25 points a game, he was always there to, to congratulate you and say hi. So, but that, it's always been a family a family game for the Elliots, and that had to be even more special with having Trent there. And well, most most definitely, um, you know, I was very blessed to be able to coach Trent, and um, and and he had great teammates to go along with it. And you know, um, as a coach, sometimes you make decisions uh, that you may look back on and think, well, I wish I'd done that a little different or whatever. But obviously, as a coach, you're making the right decision at that time that you believe is the best for your team. And uh, but uh, to have my uh, father there and. Um, that type of thing, like you say, he, he went to all the games, and uh, then when Trent went on to college, uh, he rode with us to, to go to those games as well, and um, he was a proud uh, grandpa of his grandson, and that uh, it, always uh, a part that I remember as well, And um, but uh, like I say, the, the thing that I just really enjoyed about this team in 2014 there is everybody just understood their role and what it was going to take to win ball games, and 
Um, you know, those uh, we, we played a phenomenal first half against Argus there, but it was definitely uh, a whole different game in the second half and third quarter especially. And we had a bunch of young guys step up and, and do things that we needed and, you know, got the championship and definitely a, a moment that uh, they're going to remember the rest of their lives. I got two questions, you know, statements for you. You know, one, first of all, just think all that started because you signed a, a napkin one night. You know what I mean? All that started because of a, a napkin. That's, you know what I mean? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd been with their girls for several years. And, um, you know, once uh, Trent got into middle school and my daughter was over at the academy and wasn't going to be playing girls basketball, um, you know, for me or anything. And um, so I wanted to make that switch. And, yeah, Coach uh, – Barrett, uh, he's always uh, got a napkin ready for a quick signature and uh, uh, get it, and then that led to the contract. But um, it uh, it was kind of ironic when he asked me to be his varsity assistant, and then uh, the very next year uh, we went or two years or whatever that we went a sectional, and he's out in the sunset married. So uh, that that definitely changed things to step up and then uh, do the head job. But it was um, it was great when he was able to uh, come back and help us, obviously with his knowledge and experience of the game. Uh, the, the two of us were able to work together, and uh, Coach Kruger um, was a, a, another Culver grad and, and had a lot of pride in our school and um, our teams, and the three of us spent a lot of time together uh, at the round table in the office there or scouting or whatever it might be, and the camaraderie was uh, outstanding with the coaching staff. And like I say, I think our players uh, were legitimately concerned for each other and happy when each other did well or helped them when they did poorly um, so you know just being able to get a mix in there uh, Graham came in and gave us great minutes late in that uh, season as well when our depth was down we had guys injured at different times and Jakota battling through a torn ACL and you know and just go right on down the list of um, Everett Kruger like say as a sophomore that year coming in and uh, uh, Kersick um, was involved there to be able to come in and give us some good minutes too and Cody Valaquet, you know, there's just so many of them that were able to uh, assist. And it wasn't just on the basketball floor during a game as the practice sessions, you know, banging Trent around and, and getting them to understand that you got to be tough. And um, uh, those guys did that. Our JV um, was a big part of the success of that varsity. We had a JV that would, it was hard nosed as well. Coach Kruger coached them up and, you know, was helping uh, every practice session to prepare our kids for what was coming up. and. Um, when we headed into that tournament, we had some confidence in what we could do and um, maybe what we could, uh, especially with, the, like you say, two losses to an Argus and a Triton team that we had to face and um, win that uh, semifinal on Friday night against Ar or, uh, Triton in the way we did. That was a good, very good basketball team, obviously well coached, and I, they had high expectations of a sectional championship, I'm sure, as they came over here as well. And for our kids to compete the way they did and uh, come away with that victory to get to earn the right to be in the championship and that's what we always stress as coaching staff you have to earn things nobody's going to give you anything and it starts on the practice floor and we uh we had very good practice sessions you know throughout the uh end of the season leading into that tournament and that all kind of pulled it together when we needed to it's probably my core memory of of the entire my entire time was that game. Yeah, that's one of the things, you know, when you talk about scouting and stuff like that, that I, that the part that I love is it's, it's multifaceted because if you don't have a team that understands it or is willing to do it, it does you no good. <laughs> so you got to have the team members that are willing to buy into it and understand it's scouting important what you want to do. So that team was dialed in. You know, my 2008 team that I coached was dialed in. So that made it fun for me to put time into it because you knew they wanted to put time into it. But, you know, and you look at scouting the other way is, Sometimes people don't do that as much because they worry about your own team more than the other team. I always felt like for Culver, you know, community to be, I guess, competitive, we better do anything we can to take an advantage so we can, can compete and possibly win. So that's why scouting always was so important live for me to hear calls, to understand that, and then hopefully you could pick up some because it could be one or two possessions. If you know what's going on and you steal it and you go, that could make a benefit for you, and I think that's what was really neat. And, um, of course, obviously, if it's Triton, it's, that's my Super Bowl. You know, I, Jason Groves is a heck of a coach, and that was one thing that I always liked, that challenge to see what he was going to do and how he's going to change it. Coach Boldry at Knox was the same way for me, being from Knox and him being such a great coach. That was, those are my two big games that I wanted to make sure I was, I was ready <laughs> and make sure the kids were ready for those two. And, and it made it fun because if you know Jason, he started hiding his mouth a little bit and started yeah. calling 
or he'll call his kid to a huddle. So I was just like, you know, that one of our kids, get yeah, in his huddle. I want to know what I he's saying. You know, it, it, and so. Trent came, comes and sits in their huddle, and then he gets furious. Oh, absolutely. And wants, he wanted the technical or something, yeah. and the official's like, it's, you're on the court. Yeah, you're, absolutely. You're, yep. He can be there. Yeah, so that was my keys. I want our kids to look at his lips and know what he is calling so we could try to take advantage of it. And the – you know, you're, you're talking about scouting. Obviously, with the Internet and things like this, you don't see a ton of guys, you know, doing scouting anymore occasionally. Um, know that, uh, that Chris McGowan, girls coach at uh, Tri Township, he's, he's big into that same thing. You know, he goes, I want to see a team once, if not twice. And he goes, I don't care how many gyms I have to go to. I know people know that I'm there, but I want to see live basketball because you can't, you know, you can replay it, but it's not quite the same as being there. So, And it's not. One, you don't get to hear calls as well when it's on, you know, video. You're going to be able to break it down and pause it and go back, which is nice. But, you know, the whole reason I'm there is I'm looking at the coach. You know, I'm, I'm seeing the play, but I want to see what the coach is calling, what is he doing, uh, just to try to pick up anything when it comes to the game situation. Right, and that, that uh, I know – and then coaches didn't really exchange much film then, did they? There not was back a, then. It was, it's not the way it is today when you have huddle where they're just sending it left and right. You know, you have to obviously put it on a DVD or a VHS tape. And co football coaches are different from basketball coaches. Yeah. Football coaches are always willing to say, hey, we'll trade the last two weeks. Right. Basketball coaches are not that way. We didn't like that. We, <laughs> we wanted to keep secrets, I guess. So we, it wasn't we, the same way. You and I have had this conversation Football coaches, in, in, at least in Indiana, football coaching is you know somewhat of a I call it a brotherhood of guys that are going to um, guys that are going to you know ha have clinics together, hang out. And I know the the basketball coaches have clinics together and things, but the local guys, right? You know, coaches from this school, that school, we hang out with the guys from wherever we go as football coaches, wherever. Basketball coaches don't do that, yeah. and it's not like it. You'll say hi to each other, you're cordial, but it's a uh, I call it dirty almost. Yeah, it's, it's a little almost, dirty. <laughs> yeah, but they do the coaches show for football where all the coaches go to Applebee's or whatever and they do that. They don't seem to do that for basketball. So as, uh, as uh, Lucas Perry is uh, mopping the floor for us, Coach Evans is going to uh, call a timeout. We're going to be joined uh, right now by our big $250 winner. And correct me if I'm wrong. This is the first time, right? It that is, we've yeah. had, that oh, we've, yeah. And we've done this for two years. Yep. So the first winner of the uh, Zaner Excavating J. Rogers Services halftime shootout, Braylon Jackson. Welcome. Hello. So eighth grader, Culver Community, middle high school. Wh how many times have you taken that shot in our gym? Um, a lot because we do. When we're out here playing like knockout, we do half court knockout during gym class. When we're playing, I usually like make a couple, but not in a row like that. So I does, usually don't switch in my bank though. So does Mrs. Mrs. Brace get commission then? Oh, it's not Mr. Brace, it's Mr. Elliott. Oh, Mr. Elliott. Okay, so does Mr. Does, are you going to give Mr. Elliott a cut since he plays that in gym class? And that's well, we choose to play that. So. Oh, okay. I didn't know you were strong enough to get it there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I thought maybe you'd have to scoot up, maybe you know, to the front of the cab mark. Huh? You've been lifting lately, or what's going on? No, not really. <laughs> I should be though. Well, you should be because we have football season that starts here in a couple of months. But that's beside the point. Um, I did see you gave the money to mom, though. Do you not yeah. trust your classmates? Well, I don't want to lose it or anything because I just got it, so it's pretty smart. Now, what are you going to do with it? That's the that's the million dollar question. Why we brought you on because we want to know what you're going to do with it. I honestly have no clue so far. I might get new like new shoes and stuff. Well, what what we eyeballing? What kind of shoes we eyeballing? Um, well, since tracks coming up, maybe new track shoes and stuff. Not a bad idea. And I, I, we noticed that you didn't give it to Dad as well, so that was probably wise too, right? No, he was in the bathroom. <laughs> bad timing on Dad's part then, huh? Yeah, but he did see it. <laughs> that is cool. All right. Well, we appreciate I think uh, uh, so I was going to say we appreciate you being with us, but if I'm not mistaken, Mom, Mom's going to be starting to take pictures of you here in a second, so we'll yeah. keep you on for a few more minutes. So I said you were going to buy all the cheer block a drink. That's exactly what he said. He said you were going to take them all out and celebrate. Not the case. Nah, that's <laughs> wasting it. Well, <laughs> Mr. Barrett might be able to get you uh, like a discount, maybe like a dollar fifty instead of two fifty. That's only fifty cents. That's not much. <laughs> no, it's, well, it's two fifty, and you could get it for a dollar. So you'd be saving a dollar. His drinks are two fifty now. Uh, yeah, don't commit to that. Don't yeah, I, I thought it was two dollars. <laughs> well, hey, if you get it for two dollars, don't say anything. Yeah. Right? Well, we appreciate you being with us, Braylon. Thank you for coming on here and being the first winner. You may want to say something to uh, to uh, Jay Rogers Services and uh, Zayner Excavating, who they've done a great job sponsoring that for two years. We don't know if they'll sponsor it again. Why not? 
Well, because if you keep buying tickets, here's the question. Are you are you forbidden from now on from ever playing again since you won? Well, I think you're the go-to guy now. I think they're going to pick you out of the crowd and say, hey, let's have him shoot. You can make some money. What do you think? Yeah. Split the cost that he's talking about. Are you going to be like the guy from Argus last night that just kept shooting the ball at halftime? Is that going to be <laughs> no. your new? Are you going to be our entertainment? He was different, but. All right. Well, we appreciate you being on. Speaking of shots, there's Jonas McEwen uh, with one, a put back there. Yep, thanks for having me. Yes, thank you. So Logan Claudell is going to head to the free throw line for the Cavaliers. And we're back to basketball. We haven't, we haven't talked about. Uh, Wish we could have done that last night with, <laughs> with Jonas. He got, he got uh, rung up for one of our fouls. Or I think it was David's foul early in the game, like first call. As the officials talk about some things, probably. Yep, they're yeah, just making they're, sure they have the correct yeah. number. Hey, Kim already corrected it, but yep. they, those two guys. What's it, John? You said the far guy's yes, name? Yes, John. <laughs> Look at them laughing with each other and giving each other a hard time. I wish, I wish they made a million Jimmy Arnett's. It'd be great to have every official be like that. Girls semi-state this week? No, regional this weekend. Regionals, yep. Casting obviously uh, playing uh, tomorrow, which will be very fun. It should be uh, a nice atmosphere and game. I think the, their game with Bethany Christian got canceled in, this, in the year, didn't it? I say I don't think they end up uh, playing each other, so that would be a nice matchup uh, tomorrow. We wish them good luck. Obviously, those girls have put a lot of time into uh, basketball, so hopefully they can reap some rewards uh, tomorrow and get a regional championship. The... Uh Marquette Blazers play, I think, Morgan Township, right? Yes, they do. At Winnemac. At Winnemac. That's a weird spot to host a regional. Yeah, they've been hosting the last couple years for uh, 2A, and obviously with the new alignment of by location, they have been getting a 1A game as well. Are we, uh, are we not eligible to host that? That is usually or? dictated by the state, and obviously they kept the same locations as normal hopefully maybe in the future uh we get get into that action because i thought it was weird that triton's get triton has boys sectional and regional yes for 1a yep so we're going to take a break and we're going to be right back you're watching culver tv welcome back here justin croy brett barrett with you so we are set to continue the third quarter here 421 left to go cavaliers down 1841 here Trent Elliott will be joining us just a few minutes. Start of the fourth quarter. Didn't plan on having Braylon Jackson on. That just happened, uh, just happened yeah. to be the case. When you hit a half-court shot, yeah. that's what happens. You win $250. Dukes. <laughs> We're, I, I hope that uh, we should have just given him a big check. Is what. <laughs> that would have been great. Right. Instead of cash, just give him a big check. Take it to the big bank. <laughs> right. You just try a bigger bank. Bigger banks cash bigger checks. Uh, Jackie Moon style. <laughs> that's, that's the goal for next year is we need a giant <laughs> Check. You know, that's that's probably one of my favorite memories. You talk about the 2008 sectional championship team where <laughs> we win it that week, and of course you're going out doing different things. And the local theater here in town, Shane Lowry had a connection there to get us into the movie theater, and we're watching this movie. And of course, they pick a basketball movie and pick semi-pro. And of course, as coaches, we didn't know what it was about, and the yeah. kids were just like, "We're watching this, yeah, sure." And next, you know, we're watching, we're like, "Oh no!" <laughs> But what a great time and a great memory. One of those where you just, I chuckle about it now, but probably wouldn't have been <laughs> in 2008. <laughs> you, you, gave, you gave me one of the best pieces of advices when I started teaching that you kind of have to separate and compartmentalize the, the coach, the teacher, the you know, community member type of thing. And there's different things that you can do. You're not, you know, in the classroom, you're maybe a little different than you are on the coaching on the field or on the floor. And then, so I know Coach Evans is, you know, doesn't say some of the things he says during basketball games in the classroom. Yep, exactly. And so, <laughs> so that's uh, that's different. You know, going to watch semi pro. I think what we watched a movie too. I think we may have watched semi pro. It was in somebody's classroom. Uh, that, that would surprise me. <laughs> after ours, I, I at fourteen, you think? Yeah, I think we did. I know it wasn't in mine. <laughs> no, because you were you were an administrator by then. But we, I want to say it was. Uh, 
Was there like a multi-purpose room, Mrs. Kitchell, somewhere down in there during that time? Maybe yeah, I don't know. Uh, but that was a, for some reason, that stands out. Now, you'll find this good to know. Because obviously I was there during the 2008 season helping with, the, helping with that team. And I was actually at the movie theater and got to watch Semi-Pro. With us there, with you us. did? Yes, nice. I was there. That, that, you snuck in the back door. I did. <laughs> well, not the back door, but I was. I sat in the back, and that was. Uh, so I, I remember that was the first time I had ever seen it, and I thought it was hilarious yeah. then, and I, <laughs> I still do. That's so we try to quote some of those lines from that movie to my youngest, and she has no clue. It's like, oh, I, I've, I haven't done my job as a father. I'm going to have to sit down and watch that movie with her. We got lucky though. There was a series there during my time in middle school and high school where Will Ferrell had three or four great movies come out. Talladega Nights, Semi-Pro, Step Brothers, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Those are three iconic movies. It's before he had to team up with Mark, Marky Mark and start doing all these Daddy's Home movies or whatever they're... I think that's what they're called, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just got a text from Lucas Hansman, so he must be listening to the broadcast. Me oh. talking about Semi-Pro, and that's all he put, Semi-Pro. Yeah, him and John Davis loved every minute of it. <laughs> My face was probably beat red the entire time. <laughs> You text him back and tell him that uh, Premier Turf Solutions is more than welcome to sponsor Culver TV. <laughs> oh, he's listening. And if you get, if you go follow them on Facebook, share. I think they're still doing their uh, Papa's. They are. I Papa's saw that gift tonight. card yes. giveaway. So get on, follow uh, Premier Turf Solutions. We'll get, we'll give him a shout out. Absolutely. That one no good. Tipped around. I'd like to see Binion grab that one. Yeah, so we just can't find a rebound either right now. What? Give me your, give me your opinion, your your TV opinion, broadcasting opinion. Is this uh, a hangover from being fatigued from last night? Is this personnel as we're kind of rotating through? We got both McEwen brothers on the bench. Is this uh, a really really good Pioneer team or? Oh, well, I think it's, it's a little bit of everything. Obviously, Pioneers playing at a different energy level than mm -hmm. we are. Um, obviously, they're attacking the rim. They're attacking rebounds. They're getting downhill and creating open looks like that. <laughs> and so basketball becomes a lot easier for you. Yeah. Um, obviously, our energy level is not there, and I think that is due to obviously playing a bell game. Difficult to turn around and, and not have a, a true probably scout report, you know, what you want to do, and then obviously try to find it. And when the ball doesn't go in the hole, it changes you. We'll see if that one does. And, you know, you just, you just don't have the same lift in the step, the same desire, and next thing you know it turns into – you know, I hate to say it, some ugly basketball at times. And so that's where we're at right now. So this is the difficult part. You know, with two minutes left in the third and you got a whole fourth to play for, you got to find something. You got to find something positive, get a group out there that's going to show some energy and move the basketball and, and do some positive things. Because obviously, you have uh, next couple of weeks are big to get ready for sectionals. Right. And the uh, I'm looking across the court here, what, what do we name the Cavalier, Max? Yes. Wow, that's a great shot by McKay. Yeah, he, he, he is the real deal. He's got some good hops in his step, and he anticipates really well. He may have close to 30 points tonight. And Rands is probably going to be close with him, too. Oh, Tyler. Uh-oh. There's the Tyler camera. taking somebody out. Hopefully he's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that, I hope, hope both, both of them are okay. Both yeah, of them say, are okay. I think that shocked Tyler a little bit yeah, just as well. We also told him. Be aware. Heads up. This might be happening as he might want to get out of that spot. Yeah. We might. <laughs> now the second time. To his credit, he's been there all night and they haven't touched yep. him yet. But the what, back to back. Oh my. Where is it? Out of bounds. I think that's going to be Pioneer Ball. Should be. Yeah. And you just can feel. You can feel the energy Pioneers bring right now. Their bench is standing up. They're into it. They got some good energy right now. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And that's going to be free throws. So Tyler doesn't have to worry about it. He saved this possession. Like the uh, cheerleading uniforms. Did a good job fundraising to get those. Look nice. Yes, they do. Good number as well for cheerleaders. I think we were like three or four last year, so doubled up already, which is nice. I have my own opinion on cheerleading. <laughs> Better not say it on air. <laughs> I'm not going to. Let's put it this way. I've heard and learned more about cheerleading in 
the last six months than I have in my entire life. I bet. But I don't know if you saw McKaig there, just how he naturally could get up and hold the ball and shoot on a tip. is He's, he's pretty athletic. <laughs> There's a three for Jack Rogers. Are you still are you still bitter? <laughs> Get, getting fired. So <laughs> that is awesome. Here's the deal. That's a good one, Steve. I like Here it. Here is the deal. <laughs> I go to Argus last night. I take my son. I pay to get in, right? And this this is the part that makes me up the most upset. I pay my five dollars to get in. I grab a roster. I go up top. I'm hanging out. Get my concession stand stuff. Waiting for the bell game. And I'm looking at the roster, and sure enough, it says assistant cheer coach. Justin Croy. Yes, so sir. as far as I'm concerned, Argus Community Schools owes me $5 because I shouldn't have had to pay to get in last night. But Well, it depends. Did you stand on the sideline with the cheerleaders and help coach them, or did you I, not? I did the second half. And okay. by helping coach, see, what really assistant cheer coach is, is you watch our children while <laughs> I go coach cheerleading. Gotcha. So if that's the, if that's the thing. If that's your role, you did it well, is what you're needs, saying? She needs to be... Assistant coach on the assistant coach roster because during <laughs> during uh, the fall, Anna Anna takes the kids every day because I'm gone until six o'clock at night. Hey, you know, if, if you're smart, you just simply say, "Keep me on that roster." So maybe in a couple, you know, year or two, you say, "Hey, that's a paid position. I should be getting yeah. paid for that thing." You got to keep riding it while you can. Yeah. Tur turn that negative in your mind frame to a positive. Well, I, I did try to actively, like, start helping. Like, I took the girls to the weight room. So they were in the weight room. Hannah wanted them to lift. Okay, so we did a workout there. Did a couple other things. She wanted my opinion on how some things look. So then I told her, and then I was like, well, why don't you try this? And then after that practice, I just got, <laughs> no, you're fired. Okay. Rebound there by Guas. Let's see if we get a bucket here. Got to shoot it. He does. Ah, online. So at the end of the third quarter, 26-52 is your score. We'll see if uh, we'll get a quick break and come right back. Welcome, welcome back here. Justin Croy, Brett Barrett with you as we're set to begin the fourth quarter. Cavaliers down 26-52, but it's a uh, fun environment here tonight. Got the pet band, cheerleaders, good student section here, and we are excited to be joined by uh, the leading the all-time, I should say, all-time point score in Culver Community High School history. Uh, sectional champion, uh, number 21, Trent Elliott. Thanks for having me. So, one, thanks for coming back. Uh, two, it was, I didn't really get to hear during the, during the uh, ceremony what everybody's favorite moments and memories were. So, can you go through what you filled out on the sheet? Yeah, so definitely uh, my favorite memory, uh, just holding that trophy. I still remember Albert Hanselman handing uh, to it to uh, all three of us here at uh, middle court there, and uh, Jakota, myself, and Jordan Sanders there, just all holding that up and giving it, showing it to our fan base there, the crowd. I mean, everything was great, and uh, to have that sectional championship and everyone there at center court was awesome. You remember the? You remember the? We all went to dinner afterwards going to wings yep wings and then uh well i had to even cut out because i remember going to uh oh it used to be called penders yep. uh evil check i think evil check what, at that time okay. yep. that's yep. where we went first yep yep, yep. <laughs> so uh kind of best of both worlds there but yeah oh yeah we all went out uh out to eat out there after the bus ride around town uh so it was a great time so what was your favorite quote again yeah i <laughs> I can kind of say it. My dad said, uh, make sure we get down in a stance. Um, <laughs> there was some other choice words there, but uh, can't say on air. But, uh, yeah, I just always uh, get down in a stance when uh, I like to rise up and get a back cut or back door pass and then an easy layup. And, and we'll keep it PG and bring it on, right? <laughs> yeah, that's bring it on. My friend, right? Bring it on, my Something friend. Something like that. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yep. It. The, uh, so tell us tell us where you're at now, what you're doing, and and – your family i know you got both girls here and yeah so uh we live just uh north of kokomo there um i was working at chrysler for about three years so uh once i finished up my degree there at iuk played basketball there um got an internship with chrysler and then started with them stayed with them for about three and a half four years and then uh 
we bought a house just, like I said, north of Kokomo there. Um, and now I work for uh, Smithfield in Peru. Uh, great company, great bacon. So please <laughs> oh, get that bacon. Good. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, we've uh, been there now for almost four years. It'll be four years in July. Um, and then uh, obviously my wife, Haley, and then uh, two daughters. Oldest one's Finley. She's, uh, she'll be three in July. And then uh, my youngest is Kaylee. She will be actually one in July. So uh, all July birthdays, other than my wife. So what days you got? You got? Uh, did you get a thirteenth? Yes. So yeah, yeah and that's yep, yep, Croy, that's yep. you. We got uh, <laughs> yours is the tenth, right? Yep. So mine's tenth. Then the oldest is the thirteenth, and the youngest is the fifth. Okay. Good. I got a March and a December, so I don't know, I don't <laughs> yeah. know how that happened. Somehow my wife is one day after my mom, though. So that's always fun. Oh yeah. Hi. <laughs> uh, the, so after high school, you go to Fairmont State. Yep. And yep. then play ball at IUK. What was that like? What was you know both of those colleges? Obviously, your head coach left once you got to Fairmont State, correct? The coach yes. that recruited you left. Well, uh, no. So I, I finished out my year, um, finished out my freshman year there, and then it was actually coming back during the summertime. Uh, Jace Thompson was the head coach at IUK, and he knew my mom through Woodcraft and the academy and everything. So through that we were kind of talking about you know I knew the ball was going to stop bouncing so I really wanted to get a degree in business and uh, getting that IU degree would kind of help and obviously playing smaller ball you know it, it, whatever it is I just wanted to keep on playing ball but uh, stay closer to home to uh, grandpa grandma they were always coming so uh, it, was a, it was just a great fit for me but uh, my head coach then did leave it was the next year but uh, went to Youngstown State and then I finished out like I said there at IUK and uh, just worked out worked out real well. It was a lot of fun. We actually, my senior year, got the uh, head coach there from uh, St. Joe's. They closed down, so uh, I can't remember his first church was last name, but was it Tom Church? Yes, yeah, Tom Church. So uh, yeah, it was it was a great time there. Um, and then obviously worked out really well with uh, getting the internship and everything, and getting the IU uh, business degree. So what uh, what's your favorite Kokomo restaurant? Oh, man. Well, I, I, I'll keep it real simple. They don't have it anymore, but uh, Dad and I love Golden Corral. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, so yeah. uh, we, would always, uh, we would always be there. But they, uh, what they, about Ryan's? Ryan's buffet was in Kokomo. Do you remember that? <sighs> Going to Ryan's? No, I, I don't remember. I've actually, I've heard of it, but never, never been there. I don't. I don't know if it's still there. No, it's gone. It's. It, I think it. It was Golden Corral before Golden Corral moved. Oh, gotcha. And then they're down. They're done. Right. They're just no longer there. Yeah. No. Yeah. The, uh, they actually just this past week or week before they. Uh, it's a like a Chinese buffet now. Oh there. Wow. So I haven't I haven't tried it out. But uh, have you been to Louis Coney Island? Oh yes. Yes. That's, that's my all time yeah. top five favorite restaurants. Phenomenal. Ever. Phenomenal. That that's great. Well, we appreciate you being on with us. Coach Brandt, do you have any questions? Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's always fun when you reminisce and get to watch the video that you posted on YouTube and stuff. Had you have a chance to even to go back and look at that? Because obviously we didn't watch it as a team because we're preparing for regionals, so we didn't look at it. Did you get a chance to go back and watch the YouTube clip and hear, you know, Tony Ross, the boss, on it? Did you get a chance to do that? Yes, and, uh, yeah, and like you said, I, I hadn't until uh, Justin sent that out. So, that I mean, it was awesome just to kind of reminisce and, and get to see it. I mean, I remember some of it. I do remember the third quarter not scoring at all until Dakota hit it. But then, I, you know, I kind of forget about it, and then you get to watch it again and kind of see that. Or even, you know, plays like myself where it's like, God, why am I not in this dance? Or, you know, I, I see why Dad was yelling there, you know. <laughs> so, yep. yeah, but, no, overall, I mean, it was. It was awesome to get to watch that and uh, see the whole game again. Yeah, obviously, you know, talk us through a little bit. You know, obviously you've been around the program since you've been – pre-k kindergarten with dad coaching girls you know and then obviously came to the boys side and always being there and him being the coach you know talk to me a little bit or uh, us a little bit about how that went from as a kid maybe looking up to some of those boys and you know winning a sectional what did that mean to you as a kid and then to be able to do it as a player yes yeah, so uh obviously you know we talk about the group that we had outside of jakota um like you said we we were pre-k to you know going to play and travel ball i remember knox the aybt tours so it, it was awesome as a group of guys. You know, we lost a couple guys to the academy, obviously, but uh, the the main core here, you know, we got to go and play AAU ball, summer ball, all that, all the way up through. And then, like you said, um, I remember watching Stacy Stevens. I was real young, but just watching that with Dad, or obviously Ron Stevens coaching and every Heather, 
But uh, watching her play, and then she actually gave me some shooting lessons, so <laughs> helped me out a little bit. But uh, then the, the men's side of it, obviously that 08 team uh, with Lucas Hanselman, John Davis, you know, all them getting to watch them play. And then uh, obviously I give a lot of credit to Zoe Bauer. Uh, I would always talk a little smack to him and stuff, and he, he would give it to me, you know, my freshman year, but now over the years, we still stay in touch, but uh, between him and Lucas, just watching them grow up, and obviously, I, I still remember as a kid watching that 08 sectional and just knowing I got four years to try to get one done and yep. get a picture on the wall, like we always say. Absolutely. One of my favorite Culver basketball memories was the, the like, Monday or Tuesday after school, 2008, uh, when... when after it was after the season, Barrett was done, and I think you you I remember you telling me your dad was going to be the head coach. I, mean, I, I think we were Miss Trent's sixth sixth grade class, and you came in and you, you told me that you can't dad, say anything. Dad was going to take it over. You, yeah, you can't say anything, but my dad's going to be <laughs> yeah. the, the head basketball. Yeah. And it was funny just because it, was, it came full circle. Oh yeah. Not only yeah. was he the head basketball coach, but it, it really started. Uh, I guess I learned today it started on a napkin. For me, it started in Miss Trent's sixth grade class. But yeah, it started on a napkin it and sure ends did. with a with a picture on the wall. So yeah, that's awesome. And and then a night like this, I was telling I was telling Brett, I said, you know, the the idea to do all this and stuff was the only. I just did the math. The idea started because they did it last year for the for the 08 15th anniversary, but uh, man, I felt old. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Well, coming back here with two kids, <laughs> I feel a little <laughs> old right now. I still think I can hoop, but I haven't touched the ball in about three, four years, so now, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. You, Zoe, Jakota, and Micah never all played at the same time because I believe Jakota got hurt in football, right? So yes. That, that his freshman, freshman year, year Jakota wasn't. I, I've, I've thought about that a lot. Could you imagine what we could have, you know, what could have happened that year? Our freshman year would have been Zoe's senior year, and, and with Micah sophomore, Colin. Uh, that but, yeah yeah you know, that no, never we, yep yep we would have I mean it would have been a big uh, what if but yeah it was it was a I'll lot say, of fun if, if you remember the summertime we played Plymouth and we played both, oh, yes. both Plymouth yes. teams with Mac Mercer and we beat both of those beat, squads correct. with yep. that team and that's when we thought okay we might we have, might have something special going. here correct. and then of course Dakota had to go ruin it in yeah. football you know <laughs> I but know. otherwise I, yeah. I remember that summer was a very fun summer <laughs> it was a it lot was. of dunks a lot of high flying that summer yes. Because that, that was uh, Lafayette, too, wasn't it? Didn't you do the Purdue camp, AYBT, at Lafayette? We did that one. We did the Wabash. And then, obviously, we hosted one here at Culver just as well. So, it was some fun times. Yes, it was. One of, I can't even remember, too. One of the years at Wabash, we, we made it to, like, the, to finals. the finals. four. Yep. Yeah, okay, was it the finals? Yep. <laughs> Jimmy getting <laughs> – Student body's giving Jimmy an earful. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, – so, as I'm watching the game here, anything else you want to add to uh, comment about your time? No, just like like I said, overall, it, it was just a fun group of guys to be around. Uh, I know, you know, we all, everyone did it differently and stuff, but uh, we were here in the summertime, even playing football and stuff, but just the camps that we had, the overnight parties, and uh, during the summer, you know, we'd stay two nights or one night here, and we'd sleep up here, and we'd have our own, bring in a tent or bring in your rollout mattress. Everyone's got their own stuff. So, overall, just uh, good camaraderie and uh, fun group of guys, great group of guys to be around. I brought an air mattress, and it was, like, electric, so it had a motor <laughs> on it, and then it. By, I woke up on the floor, on the yeah. hard concrete, <laughs> yeah. on the hard, because yeah. it had it deflated overnight. That was That was fun. Oh yeah! Back in the, what do you think of the school? This is your, is this yours for first time, right? Seeing well, yes, but I did see it uh, a little bit of it right around Christmas time. Okay. Uh, came up with Dad because that's what uh, everything changed. Because I don't remember if it was two years after you guys got a new floor. Not obviously this one. It was a newer one than what we used to, yep. and then uh, you guys got this one and like the lights and everything. I remember the old. It was the old flip them on it took a minute and then you know went and obviously the ceiling was white not all painted black <laughs> yep. so well actually it was kind of yellow yeah. <laughs> with chunks so, missing. Yeah, yeah yeah shout out to coach zaner for the uh the black ceiling suggestion yeah no it's it's uh, it's awesome and just the whole because that whole side of the court there where the locker rooms are and that whole hallway obviously that was not there or anything like that so 
It is. It's a. Uh, it's awesome. Did you see the la the magnets on the lockers? The yeah. Okay. Yes, that is. That's awesome. So I don't know about one person on there. I don't know. He was like yeah. distorted, made it kind of look a little ugly. Yeah. But I mean, otherwise it wasn't so bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Zoe was a pretty good ball player. I don't know what you guys are talking. <laughs> about. Yeah. Well, thank you, Trent. Appreciate it, bud. Good thank seeing you, you again. Yeah, thanks thank for you coming up, and we'll. I'll, I know I'll see you before then, but. Uh, We'll be back in 10 years for <laughs> yeah, number 20. And I think some of us are on every 15, every 10. Depends on the we'll, – we'll do a 25th for the 08 team. There we go. Right, so all of Barrett's beard will be gray. but yeah. <laughs> Most of it. No hair. He'll be, he'll be a grandpa probably by then. Retired. And, <laughs> retired. There you go. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you were to ask me 10 years ago, would I be married with two kids, I would say no. So – yeah. Oh, we all would, we all would say boat. no. We didn't think yeah, you'd get true. it wise, so we're like, we'd all be in the same boat. I don't know how it happened either. <laughs> well, we appreciate it, and uh, we're going to go back to see if Rodgers can put this one in. That rebound will be gathered by Thanks, Lucas Trent. Perry. All righty. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you, Trent. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, bud. All righty, brother. Thank you. See you. This will be a 30-second timeout. So let's get a fan's perspective here <laughs> of uh, of that team and, and the environment and atmosphere. Steve, what do you remember of of that during that time? You were here, obviously. You were at the ga uh, you were at the game, if I remember correctly, right? Well, he's doing you on the spot. I didn't know. I'm, I'm going to learn some information tonight. You're kind of putting me on the spot. <laughs> well, just you don't have to talk specifically about the about the game. You could just talk about the team. I mean, you obviously you were aware of the team and and the success that they were having. But we've we've heard the head coach. We've heard you know the leading score. And with the one thing we haven't had is you know community and fans odd. So well, I was more paying attention to the girls side of things back then. <laughs> right, right. So I mean, obviously it was a great. You know, Triton had such a lock on that sectional for so long. And to finally break through and to, and to get that win, uh, I think it was a team of uh, a little bit of destiny there. You know? Yeah. And I, I look at it like uh, I've always equated it to Peyton Manning Super Bowl versus the, the Patriots, where the Patriots continue to win, continue to win, continue to win. It was finally yeah. 2009. That Colts team, you know, wins the AFC Championship, wins the Super Bowl, and that was always, you know, Triton continuing to win. You have mm -hmm. Clay. You know, that, and they won a state championship with Yo, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, right? With Clay Yo, probably when he was a freshman or freshman, sophomore, or right? it was yeah. somewhere in that. Yep, because they had the Everett and all that. Right, so, yep. and so they go through that and they continue to win, and then they have to come here. It's played here. It's not at their place. And I'm still upset that the uh, that the regional was over there. <laughs> you remember that ride? You remember taking the ride that. Uh, we got escorted, and we were going like 25 miles an hour the entire way. Yeah. We had to call and say, hey, we need, we need to be we there. Get there. <laughs> so the chief of police escorted us all the way from Culver going through 20. Argus <laughs> to, to Triton at 20 miles an hour the entire way. So it was it was quite the show. But Yeah, our timing that we always planned for was doubled. It's like, uh, <laughs> we better hurry. Sorry for putting you on the spot, Steve. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're such a good you're su you're good at this. We only have 11 seconds left, so I guess we can talk about. <laughs> you you talked a little bit about at the beginning of the game about, about the 2014 sectional champion. So I was just hoping you would repeat that. I wasn't trying to really put you on the spot, so I'm sorry. It's my fault. As this one wraps up here, is deep three, 45-60 is going to be your score on John Harold tonight. That will bring this to a close. So uh, I want to I want to definitely send a big shout out to Dominic Lefebvre, Tyler Sedal, R.J. Woods, Steve Stricker, uh, Brett Barrett for putting tonight's broadcast on. I, if you're a regular watcher of Culver TV, that was uh, immaculate. That was that was the best the best broadcast. Uh, that we've done camera-wise. Definitely wasn't my best broadcast, but 
just uh, You're putting Steve on the spot, well, putting people on the spot. I'm trying Come to on. I'm trying to kill time here. It's hard to say. <laughs> it's hard to say a bunch when it's 45 to 60. So uh, obviously, Cavaliers. We talked about it a million times. Struggling with the uh, you know, look look pretty fatigued tonight, and pace of play was a lot different tempo. And shot you know credit to the Pioneer Panthers came in and, and shots fell. They they hustled. They played hard. Completely different tempo of the ball game and uh, and got things done. And so they're going to go into the you know last part of their season. They will be um, they're going to be at Winnemac on the 16th. Culver is not going to be at Winnemac on the 16th. I have ours. We have North Judson next. North Judson yeah. is next, yes, on the 13th. So that will be a varsity 8 o'clock start. They will be at North Judson, so we'll be good there. But, um, yeah, so we appreciate everybody watching tonight. Thank you to uh, Tyler and, and Dom and RJ and, uh, and Steve for sure.